Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to talk about a program path through our slam ball program. We made a slam ball program because I don't, frankly, I don't see a lot of other slam ball programs on the market. Slam balls are available. They are nearly indestructible. They are easy to store. And for what you get out of them, they are not that expensive. They also train you in primary basic human movement patterns very, very well. So in the program, we have picking it up, putting it overhead, squatting with it, ground to shoulder. Those are kind of the classics. Then we divert into Seiza, which is getting up from a kneeling position, which is a primary human movement skill that people have very, very much lost in the modern world. And then there's a fighter get up included in the program as well. If you do it with the slam ball program, you get really good at it. It gets really easy to get up under stress. We talked about this previously. We would like everybody to do the workouts four to six times per weight. Let's walk through some of the layout for doing it six times on a heavy light cycle. This is nerdy. For people who watch all of our nerd math videos, this is for you. For everybody else, this might not make a lot of sense, but this is exactly how you get what you want out of training. So this is the kind of information that is very important to know. We are going to abbreviate in a couple of different ways on the board because it's easier to write a lot of information if you abbreviate it. L1 stands for level one, L2 stands for level two, L3 stands for level three, L4 stands for level four, etc. Our sub number down here is the number of the workout. So starting this program, we're gonna start with one weight and we would do level one, workout one. Level one, workout number two. Then we're gonna to jump to level two. This is a neurological trick to make level one seem easy. Then we go back to level one, we do workout three. Then we go back to level two and we work out two. So we're not doing the same exact movements after our initial phase and we're rocking back and forth between these two different levels of complexity so that we can neurologically make it seem easier on ourselves. Level one, workout four. Level two, workout three. Then we start introducing level three, and we're gonna call that level three, workout one. Then we jump back, level one, workout five. Usually when you do workout three for the first time, it's very, very challenging because it's new movement patterns. So we, in order to make our life seem easy, not actually easy, seem easy to our brain, we go back to level one, which at this point, you've already seen that information four times, times three rounds. You've already seen all of that information a total of 12 times. So doing it this fifth time makes it seem much easier. Then we go back to level two, and that will be workout number four, then level three, workout number two. Then we get here to a level one workout number six, and that would be a goal workout. And then after this, this one will jump to a heavy and we'll start to introduce a heavy light cycle from here on forward. Level two, workout five. Level three, workout number three. Then this level one becomes Level one, change the color to denote that we have moved up to a heavy weight, and that will be workout one. Level two, workout six. That's a horrible six. Once again, this now indicates a decision point. We can either add complexity or we can start going up in weight. Let's start by adding complexity. So we have level three, so let's put in level four after that. Workout number one. That seems hard because it's a high level of complexity. So after that, our goal is to make our life easier. We go back and do say level three, workout number four. So now we have one, two, three, and four in here. Now you can have a bunch of different decision points. You could either start to alternate between the heavy workouts because we're gonna have a heavy workout level one and a heavy workout level two, or we can continue on with a pattern. There are an infinite number of ways to do this. Normally people will decide this on their own because there's no way to build a perfect idea for everybody's situation. What we can do is tell people how to do this and then see how they develop it on their own. There's almost no wrong way to do this as long as you end up doing each level 
six times with each weight. Some people will choose to master one level and do all of level one and then do all of level two and then do all of level three and then go back and have a heavy level one alternate with say a light level four and then a heavy level two alternate with a light level five. That also works extraordinarily well. This is kind of the fancy way that I do it in order to trick people into doing it back when they were in the studio with me if I was training actors for movies or whatever. Actors tend to have less overall, what do we call it? Focus, they want a lot more variation in their workouts. So they want things to change all the time. And this is a way to have it seem like it's changing all the time but actually have it be progressing on a perfect path of its own. So let's put in our level one, workout two, and then we'll have level four, workout two, and then level two, workout one, and then level three, workout five. Right here on this path forward, we're starting a pure, heavy light cycle. You'll notice we don't get to level five for a while. Level five usually ends up getting pushed back. Most people will end up doing level one a lot more than they end up doing level five for the most part because levels one, two, and three have an intermediate level of complexity. It's the pure basics. Level four and five or where everything really starts to smash together. We would like you to eventually do a ton of level five but usually that's when level one is on weight number three. That works out better for most people because level five has so much complexity in it that we want them to be overly strong at their pure basics before we start adding in a lot of that other level five types of complexity. We're over preparing ourselves for level five. Simplest possible idea. This idea is pretty important. There are always these decision points when we hit the end of a weight with a workout, when we hit the end of a levels required number of workouts, where we either get to add complexity or go up in weight. And this changes. Guys who are trying to get stronger faster, we tend to jump to going back to the basics and going up in weight. Oftentimes, if you're working with say like female models or whatever, you'll take the option to add complexity because a lot of uh, females or performance females don't want to be going up in weight. They want to add the complexity because it makes them move more gracefully. So there's always those decision points in every program that we design. Let's lay out quickly the other path where you would do all of one level and then jump it that way. The other way to do this would be do all of level one. So level one, workouts one to six, and then you would do level two, workouts one to six, and then usually after level three, workouts one to six, you would begin alternating a heavy light cycle from there. So it would go back to level one. And then you could do all of level one, workouts one to six, and then go to, where's our other color pen? Level four, one to six, level two, one to six, and then level five, one to six. Right here after this one, there's that decision point where you could decide what to do. It could be level fives, one to six, or it could be level one with a new weight, a super heavy weight, one to six. There are an infinite number of ways to lay this idea out. Usually this is determined by what weights we have access to and whether they want to go up in strength or they want to add complexity. Those are always your decision points. This way allows people to get through six, 12, 18 workouts at twice a week, nine weeks before they had to get another weight. So this one works out very well for people who are spreading out their equipment cost over time. Then they get that level one that gets introduced into the system. Then they're using both of their weights. If they were to jump here to that third weight, that's a short period of time between these two before they got this weight. So they could either stretch it out and stick with heavy light instead of heavy medium light in order to defer equipment costs for longer. This is always why we're designing our programs the way we are designing it. We are designing in everybody's option 
for their economic situation and for what they want to achieve in that amount of time. If people have more money, they can ramp up faster because they have more weight. It doesn't matter. Eventually you're going to get more out of it. You either do complexity or you add weight. Eventually you're going to do both. Eventually you will get what you want out of the program. And that's how programs should be designed, considering all of those options because that's how I wish people had designed programs for me and nobody ever did.